What is up, Jax fans? Man, we have a lot to talk about. It's been like a week and a half since we've done a show. So I'm super excited. I want to apologize for the late start. Uh, I was over on my Twitch channel doing some other things that kind of got the best of me. So go ahead and check that out. That link's in the description. While you're checking out links in the description, go ahead and check out the Twitter, Instagram, all of those things. Go ahead and follow that so that you can get notifications. Whenever we go live, uh, Twitter is where I keep everyone up to date. Like, for example, today's late show uh, starting. Usually we start at 9, Tuesdays and Fridays, but we got a little late start today. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, make sure to uh, subscribe to the channel so that you can be involved in the chat. This is a member show. Uh, so Jags fans, get in there and um, tell me what you think. We're talking free agency. And just to let you know, I do have um, a breakdown of some players that I think the Jags could take at, at their pick in the first round. Um, I just didn't really feel like doing it tonight. So be looking out for Thursday or Friday me doing that show. Um, basically, I got breakdowns on Brian Branch, Dalton Kincaid, Brian Br Bruzy, Michael Meyer, uh, Deontay Banks, Nolan Smith, Anton Harrison, and Zay Flowers, Jordan Addison, Will McDonald IV, and Josh Downs, and Dewan Jones. So uh, my next show, I'm going to be kind of talk, be talking about those guys and like the pros and cons of those guys. Uh, maybe looking at a clip or two from from those guys and uh, seeing kind of who fits the Jags. Those kind of seem to be the guys that are being mocked. I mean, I know recently we're seeing a lot of Brian Branch, um, but, you know, I've heard Dewan Jones talk. I've heard Bruze talks. My favorite player is probably Will McDonald IV, the edge player out of Iowa State. Um, but, listen, there's a lot of options. They could go a lot of places there. Today, we're just talking updating free agency. We're talking a little bit about free agency. I want to get your guys' thoughts. Obviously, Calais Campbell is the big story. Like, everyone's talking about Calais Campbell. That would be awesome if he came home. But tell me what your thoughts are. Like, how, how, what would you be willing to sign him for? What do you think he ends up signing? I mean, obviously, he had conversations to, with other teams. He talked to the Lions today. And, and honestly, the Lions are a team that kind of scares me as far as, as a potential uh, suitor for him because they're also in a position to win. Uh, so I could see that happening for sure um we're going to be talking calvin ridley uh claiming number zero minutes after the nfl announced that they are going to allow players to wear zero so we'll talk a little bit about that want to get all your thoughts on those things um you know some potential guys that are still out there and maybe the jags could be interested in you know i hate to say it yannick and might i mean you got a got an interesting stat on him coming up later, but I want to get to your comments. This is a fan show, so get in the comments and tell me what you think. Matthew McCray is the first one in the comments. He says, first, yes, super pumped about that. Philip Butcher is here, boy, because Philip Butcher's always here. He's a big Jags fan. I love it. Volk Fang, who's a channel member, said third. That's right, Volk Fang. Hey, listen, third, fourth, first. Listen, we're all here. We're all here. Uh, forgive the sunburn, by the way. Man, down in the sunny Florida, got the best of me this weekend. Um, Philip Butcher said, darn second. <laughs> uh, McCray says, what's good? Uh, not much. We're just kind of hanging out here, talking Jags football. Um, had a little, had, had a week off a couple weeks ago. Um, I've been doing a lot of stuff on Twitch just because there's not much Jag stuff going on. So if you're into Twitch and you're into that type of thing, go check out the channel. Eh, it might be kind of good. Kyle Simmons says, go Jags son. Let's go. <laughs> Look, when your team is not making a bunch of splashes in free agency, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Uh, Matthew McCray says, I'm always working during the live. Well, this show started a little bit later, you know, but so hopefully maybe that helps you out. Sea Breacher, channel member Sea Breacher says, Duval, ready to go. Matthew McCray says, is Campbell coming home? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, Volkfang says, ha, I rotate shifts and two-thirds and two -thirds of the time I'm either driving in from work or trying to get stuff done in the last hour before going home. You got that late that late shift. I like it. Listen, I liked the late shift. Um, I did. I really did. Um, I, I, I'm a night person, right? So I like the later shifts. It, it's weird that society kind of tends to want people to do these early shifts. Right now, I'm kind of locked into this like 8 to 5 thing, which I don't love. I, I hate being at work at 8. Volkfang says, also getting the mayor back in Duval would, be, would make my off season. I agree. Rubicon Racer says, what's up, brother? Oh, not much. You know, have, feeling good. Feeling good today. I'm having a good week, so I hope you are too. Uh, McCray says, amen. Hoping the mayor of Saxonville will be home. Sea Reacher says, did Jason start his politics channel yet? Sea Reacher, not yet, but I'm going to. 
going to. And listen, it's not going to be just politics, all right? And don't t- oh, and listen, if you say it's going to be politics, people are going to think that I'm some sort of like a political nut job, okay? I'm not. I'm not, okay? I like politics, uh, but I kind of I kind of identify somewhere in the middle of the spectrum of the <laughs> of the continuum maybe is a better phrase. Uh, somewhere in the middle. So, uh, Ron Beedry says, Jason, baby, fire emoji. What up, Ron? Glad you're here. Predator channel member says, let's go. I got to update those emojis with all this changing going on. UCF Jaguar in the chat says, Jason, what's up, brother? I hey, mean, listen, off-season Jags, you know, it's something being a being an off-season Jags YouTuber. UCF Jaguar gets it. It's funny. We had this huge surge. I mean, every channel, you look at any Jags channel uh, when they made that run uh, this year, and that was great to see. And hopefully we have that similar type of involvement going into this year and all of this year when the Jags are good. The Vegas line just came out 10 and a half wins. Now that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm listening. When you go from like four, I remember when we've been at four, five, six, and now we're at 10 and a half. That is beautiful, baby. That is beautiful. Um, but shout out to the people that are here and that are always here, uh, even in the off season. Volkbank says overnight. Philip Butcher, channel member. What up, Philip? Uh, man, Philip Butcher's always been a member. So uh, he's on the Trevor Lawrence level. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you. Thank you for being a member. That supports the channel. Um, and, you know, listen, we always love supporting the channel. Hey, Philip, seriously, thank you. Uh, Philip Butcher says, overnight is my favorite because no boss and I get to spend more time with my boy. Okay, nice. So you, you have your schedule worked out that way. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. I mean, that's the way to do it. Find what works for you. I mean, I, I've done it all, man. Um, I, one, I once had, when I was in college, fresh out of college, I was interning in the afternoon. That's when I was coaching football. My first year as a football coach, I did it volunteer unpaid. And I literally just, you guys have heard me tell the story. I, I, I was the camera guy. I was the film guy. And I would just video practices and games, and I would break down the film for the coaches and the players to watch on this app called Huddle. And so I literally watched football over. I mean, I'd watch the same play 30 times trying to figure out how to label it correctly. So um, I've watched a lot of football in my day, but I was interned for that. And football was, is an evening mostly job. So I would work early in the morning. Uh, pretty much I'd work 12 hours a day between interning and working to pay for college. So anytime people complain about how busy and tired they are, I completely understand, and I empathize because we're humans, and that's what we do around here. We don't compl- we don't make fun of people. We empathize. Thank you, Philip Butcher. I appreciate that. Predator says I've missed a few streams, and haven't you? And haven't you? Uh, and haven't bought? I'm sorry, VOD binged yet? But have you discussed who you see the Jags drafting um, at 24 this year? I see us getting a DB that falls, but I really have no clue. So I do want to get into that a little bit, only in the in the context of. Uh, I don't think the Jags will make very many moves in free agency until the draft at this point. So I feel like they kind of did what they wanted to do. They signed those two interior defensive linemen that are kind of rotational piece, kind of, I don't want to call them camp bodies because that's maybe a little uh, insulting to their athletic ability. Uh, Michael Dogby, uh, Henry Mondo. Uh, so that happened before the Calais thing. Um, so I don't know. I mean, Still think Calais could be in play, but they did sign two interior defensive linemen, and that kind of just leads me to believe that the front office, head coaches, uh, kind of figured out that they wanted to do uh, already at that position. So, I mean, Roy Robertson-Harris, they did pay him uh, to kind of play interior D-line. I don't know. I have a feeling that perhaps they didn't offer Calais. They didn't offer him an offer he couldn't refuse because he's obviously looking at other teams. So I would love for it to happen, but he would have to probably give us a hometown discount if I had to guess Um, or ring chase, but he could also ring chase in Detroit. So if Detroit offered him more money, he could do what he's trying to do, but for more money. It's the only thing that scares me right now about Clayus Campbell. UCF Jaguar says I'm a 5 a.m. rising grinder. Listen, I get it, man. I get it. I used to, I, you know, I worked for a 5 a.m. rising grinder for a number of years and me and him like, got along personally, but we didn't get along professionally because my boy was trying to skirt out of work at 1 p.m. every day, and I was trying to work till 9 p.m. every night. So, you know, it seems like it would work, but for some reason, it didn't work. I don't know. But UCF, uh, I respect people like that. Um, my, again, I want to talk Jags, but my whole life, I've never, I haven't been able to fall asleep till like midnight. Like my whole life, from being a kid, teen, young adult, to old man right now. 
cannot fall asleep till like midnight. So if I want my eight hours, I got to wake up at eight and get to work at nine at the earliest. Uh, Philip Butcher, <laughs> people watching this, like if, you're, if this is your first time watching, then yeah, this is what we do. We sit around and talk about me. So, <laughs> but don't like to hear myself talk. So, uh, I usually talk about how I'm a podcaster and this show is going to be on podcast, but uh, this one's not being recorded. So, this one's not going to be on podcast, but it will be on VOD. It'll be on VOD. Um, Philip Butcher says, UCF is a rise in goblin. I hate morning people. Okay, that's Philip Butcher. That's what I was thinking, uh, but I didn't want to say it. I wanted to be nice. Duval TV says, Duval till we die. Brett Zimmerman. What up, Brett? Says, hey, Jags United. I finally get to go on my trip to L.A. tomorrow. Dude, I'm so jealous. Went to L.A. a while ago. It was awesome. Um, man, have fun. Hopefully you run into some celebrities. Ron Beedry says, I hope the Jaguars can sign Justin Houston and the mayor, Calais Campbell. That would be awesome. They freed up some money by restructuring uh, Foley Fatu Kasi. And we talked about last show how the Fatu Kasi restructuring was the only one that really caught me uh, by surprise. But they must believe in him based on what they've seen on film. There was a question about who I thought the Jaguars were going to draft. And what I was going to say is we're going to be talking about it on the next episode. But to give you a long answer, um, in order, I haven't put these in any order, but I'll try to quickly, looking at my list, put them in order of most likely to least likely. And again, don't hold me to this because I'm going to be doing this on the fly as I'm looking at it. I do know I think the top candidate is Brian Branch um, out of Alabama. I mean, he could come in and be a starter if you consider the nickel back spot a starter. Uh, Brian Bruzy, I think the D lineman out of Clemson, uh, would fit the spot that we're all looking to sign Calais to. And long term, he could help you. He's a good player. Um, has good stats. Um, you know, he was the nation's top recruit in 2020. Uh, so th that would be one. Um, I think Deontay Banks, again, is probably 2A now that I'm talking out loud. Deontay Banks um, out of Maryland, uh, really, really athletic guy, 4'3", 40. Um, I can see that happening. I think they're bigger on linemen than other people think. I think Anton Harrison, tackle out of Oklahoma, um, he's patient. He He's a lot like um, Juwan Taylor, a lot like Juwan Taylor, uh, a little bit shorter, but like the way that he, the way that he plays is kind of the same. Um, I would love Michael Meyer out of Notre Dame. I don't think he'll be there, but he's my favorite player that we could potentially get there. I mean, I love that he was a basketball player. Um, I love that he was like a high school Gatorade player of the year. I love that even as a freshman, he was an all American or he was a freshman all American. Um, I like how his ability to kind of do it all. I think you can play him and Evan Ingram on the field at the same time, like a lot of snaps. I would say potentially 60 to 70% of the snaps. You could play both of those guys on the field at the same time. Um, Nolan Smith, I've been big on him for a long time. When he ran that 4 3 40 at 6'2", 238, people kind of fell in love with him. Um, yeah, maybe. Um, Will McDonald, probably my favorite player um, as far as what I think the Jags may need. Uh, Edge, Will McDonald, the fourth, a little undersized. He gives people Clavon Chase on vibes because of his size. Um, and I, you know, I have a group chat, uh, where, um, I have some buddies that, that say that no one that size could ever be successful at edge at two, I mean, 239 pounds. I mean, yeah, he'll put some weight on, will he keep his speed? Um, but I got, or, and I got friends that all, and that say that no one coming out of the big 12 is ever good as far as edge rusher. Um, so I don't know. Um, other guys that I that could be there in contention, Josh Downs, receiver out of North Carolina, Jordan Addison, receiver out of U USC, Zay Flowers, receiver out of Boston College. Um, those are just some of the names there. Dalton Kincaid, maybe, tied in out of Utah. So those are some guys I want to talk about and uh, on the next show, and uh, we'll get a little bit more in-depth into those guys. Um, but I just kind of wanted to talk about Clayus Campbell and like other Jaguar things. Um, I'm going to recline here, if you guys are cool with that, because I feel like I'm... I'm chilling. Let's get to some of these comments here. Uh, UCF Jaguar says, this is what streams are like when the best player you get in free agency is dog pee. I mean, yeah, that's true. We don't have a ton of money. I mean, you could argue, like, part of the free agency, you know, Roy Robertson Harris, right? That was kind of big. I mean, the restructuring of the guys that we have, we basically are guaranteeing having all those guys longer, right? Um, so we're no longer able to get rid of them early in their contract. Like we've done with so many players in the past. Like we have to keep them pretty much the full length of their contract. Looking at guys um, like Christian Kirk, Aluakon, Fatu Kasi, um, you know, Sheriff. I could not think of, I kept wanting to call Brandon Sheriff um, Andrew Norwell. 
Dude, my brain is full of so much stuff right now. Um, Philip Butcher says, so good. I have time to be back on the lives, man. I love those seasons of your life when you got a little bit more time for the things that you like. Uh, Philip Butcher says, UCF facts. Washington State Jags fan. What up, Washington State? Been a channel member for a long time as well. Says, I dig it. <laughs> um, I'm a little backed up on the comments. I'll try to get caught up here. Um, I like that pic, Jason. What picture? The one in the background? The the uh, Jimmy Smith jersey? I got, I, got, I, got a, I got a couple frame jerseys. I got to get them up on the wall. I, I'll do it. Um, Volkfang says, this draft feels so big at the top. Like tackle, D-tackle, corner, and even tight end feel like they have a lot of talent at the top tiers. Maybe like four to seven guys that could go in the first round. Yeah, I mean that there is gonna be a, there's gonna be some good players available at that pick. I mean, historically, if we just look at historically, a lot of good players get picked at that 24 pick. I mean, we went through on a previous show of some guys that were picked 24th overall. Uh, it's a good list. Aaron Rodgers is the one I think I remember the, the standing out the most. Um, a few minutes, nothing crazy. Oh, 100 miles per hour says, how late am I? Well, I think I started, I had like a little three minute intro. So you're about 16 minutes late. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm loving talking Jags lately. GoPro Connor says GoPro Connor raid. <laughs> oh, nice. I like it. GoPro Connor. I like that name. Uh, Ben lost says, holy hell, finally made alive. Ben lost. It's funny. Cause like, I feel like I was just talking to you a couple shows ago. So. Maybe, maybe, maybe just time moves, moves slower for me for some reason. I don't know. That's weird to say. Duval TV says Calvin's wearing zero. Okay. All right. So the number zero. Now, the only thing that I thought of instantly was, again, because you guys remember, I did a uh, Devin Lloyd film breakdown. Uh, I, if you go back, I do film breakdowns of players. Um, Devin Lloyd, I, I remember, it was really easy to find him because he wore number zero. And I was like, all right, Devin Lloyd, we're number zero at Utah. And he was really easy to identify. There was even a linebacker on his team that had a similar size and build as Devin Lloyd. But like you could instantly tell by the number zero. Calvin Ridley is going to be really easy to spot. Um, he's going to be easy to see on film. Super excited. Um, I love Calvin Ridley. I mean, I love how active he is on social media. Um, I love how he kind of claps back at fans. Um, someone said something to him today. He deleted the tweet, but uh, something along the lines of how much money he won <laughs> gambling. Like, bro, you just got reinstated by the NFL. Like, that's why he deleted it. But it's funny. I like it. Um, Duval TV says, Calvin will look like a target to Trevor. Ooh, I like that. I like that, Duval TV. Uh, Philip Butcher says, no, the draft pick tight end. Wait, are you saying are you saying you don't want the pick to be a tight end, Philip? Or are you saying you do want the pick to be a tight end? Zero is weird. No, look, literally, like, the NFL announced you're allowed to wear zero, and then, like, Calvin Ridley really had the graphic ready. Like, I'm wearing zero. I wonder if he even ran it by the Jags. The Jags were probably like, oh, now I have to give him zero. We look like <laughs> we didn't do it. Um, but, yeah, we'll see. Um, I like it. I mean, he's going to be, like, is he going to be the first? I mean, I'm sure other players will wear zero, but he's going to be the first player to announce it because no one else has announced it. So, good for him. Um how about the Jags betting line of 10 and a half games? Um, I feel like we all would put the under, over under around that. So Vegas isn't far off. You know, I honestly would probably take the over if you're asking me right now. But what about the rest of the AFC South? Well, it's interesting to look at. And this is probably a transition to like the only other kind of monkey hanging around that's giving me issues is the, Lamar Jackson. Is there a chance that he goes to an AFC South team? And, you know, Everything I read online, people are like, oh, bring it on. I, I mean, I would rather go up against a rookie next year than Lamar Jackson. Um, you know, even one of these rookies like C.J. Stroud, Will Levis, Anthony Richardson, um, Bryce Young. I mean, I kind of would still rather play them this year than I would rather play Lamar Jackson. Because Lamar Jackson can just give you fits. Like, you know, look up his passing stats all you want, but – the guy is like the best running quarterback in the league, and he will tear you apart running as well. So I don't want Lamar Jackson in the AFC South. But without Lamar Jackson in the AFC South, and we can, again, can get more into that in a little bit, um, we have the Titans at, let's see here, seven and a half over under. I mean, the Jags are 10 and a half. The Titans are seven and a half. They're the next highest team. That's a three game difference from Vegas on the division lead. And those of you that follow gambling or 
partake in gambling yourself. One of the things that really always like strikes you funny when you first start getting into gambling is like how crazy accurate Vegas is like on most things like, yeah, there are they're wrong from time to time. But you realize they set lines for every single sporting event that takes place. And most of the time they're pretty they're, they're spot on. Um, I don't know what they do. I don't know if they have a deal with the devil or they have amazing analytics, but whatever it is, they're usually pretty spot on. So to see them put the Jags over under at 10 and a half and the Titans, the second best team at seven and a half. I, I don't know if you could find a division where there's that big of a discrepancy between teams one and two. I mean, I didn't think about this pre-show, but I'm running through the teams in my head and the chiefs and the chargers. I mean, the chargers are, yeah, you know, the Chargers are. Uh, I don't know what they're. I think they're the same as the Jags. I think I saw today. Um, so, uh, the Cowboys maybe, but the Giants made that run this year. I don't know, man. Maybe there is a team that, maybe, uh, but I can't think of one. That's a lot. Then you have Indy at six and a half. Um, but Indy is that's one game under, and then Houston at five and a half. So you have Tennessee at seven and a half, Indy at six and a half, Houston at five and a half. That's kind of what a division typically looks like—a one game difference. But ten and a half, I mean, that's that's good to see. Like that that excites me. Uh, all signs are pointing up, boys. Um, if you look at the schedule, the Jags' hardest games, I think, are uh, Kansas City, Buffalo, San Francisco. Although San Francisco now potentially could have Sam Darnold starting, based on Brock Purdy's injury recovery. I mean, he could be out for a year uh, with with Tommy John's, uh, but. Sam Darnold, not a bad quarterback, but I wouldn't say he's like a, a quarterback that scares me as far as a team as the high as the Jags. Uh, Cincinnati, they got to play Cincinnati, and there's good. Team. So those are those are four games. I mean, they'll probably split those, don't you think? I mean, they're not going to lose all four. So you know, I think they'll split those, and I think if they win and lose how they should, that should put them around eleven or twelve wins in my book. Um, so Vegas isn't far off, I don't think. Ben Law says Kings of the South. That's right. That's right. Volkfang says Vegas doesn't like to lose money and will do whatever it takes not to lose it. They probably pay their analytics guys enough that they could put together a bid to buy the commanders. Yeah. I would love to own an NFL team. That'd be so much fun. I mean, obviously. And it's probably a lot more work than people realize, too. But, man, that would be fun. I'd be one of those owner GMs like Jerry Jones. Like, just like I would be an, a head coach play caller. Listen, if, if my reputation's on the line, I'm going to at least try it my way first, right? If, okay, if it doesn't work out, I'll hire a GM. Uh, if it doesn't work out, I'll hire an office coordinator. But I'm at least going to try it my way first. Like, if the ship's going down and I'm going to take the blame either way, I want to make sure I'm steering the ship. Does that make sense to you guys? So I would be one of those owner GMs. And people hate those guys. <laughs> I like them. Um... Richard Bueller says, if we get Calais, can he still fill a posi all positions on the D-line? Does he still have the speed for d -end? So I think he definitely does have the ability to play different positions. He'll give you some versatility. Now, will it be what he gave you back in 2017? I don't think so. But it'll be better than what they had last year. I mean, significantly better than what they had last year. So I think just that there alone gives you an upgrade. So how big of an upgrade will it be and how big of an upgrade do the Jaguars value it being? I guess is the biggest question because like I said, if he's already, if he's talking to other teams, he, if I had to guess, he's probably figuring out how he can make the most money on the best team. Duh. That's what we all would do. So the Jags are probably in contention, but the lions are too. And the lions just might be in a position to offer him a little bit more money. If they see the need is larger. And I would, I would pay up for Clayus Campbell. And I know that's a Homer opinion, and every Jag fan feels that way. But as an unbiased football fan who's watched him a lot, he brings so much to your team. Like you talked about, the versatility on the defensive line, um, his ability to like wreak havoc on every single type of play, um, whether it be batted balls, blowing up screens, things that people don't really think about that often. He can definitely play that nose tackle position on, on passing lightning packages and passing downs. Um, I like him not to mention the team leader in the locker room and him being a veteran presence. Like that's, 
a recipe for success. If you get a guy like Trevor Lawrence in there and you get a guy like Clayus Campbell in there with the defense, with all, I mean, you already have some pretty nice leadership pieces there on the defense. Um, Roy Robertson Harris, I know, is a big leadership guy. Um, Rayshon Jenkins. So you, you have them there, but if you add a guy like Calais, man, now we're talking. Uh, Volkfang says, I'm sure it's a lot of work, but owning a team probably prints you money hand over fist as long as you are good at managing your profits. Yeah, I mean, we see every NFL franchise just in, increase in, 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 in team value, regardless if they win or lose. Um, in fact, I don't think team value increase has really anything to do with wins or losses. I think the biggest factor is the market size that you're in. So Jacksonville being one of the smallest markets is just going to have um, just the potential to not make as much team value increases as other teams, but it still makes so much money that a shrewd businessman like Shad Khan identifies it as a business opportunity to add to his portfolio to make a ton of money. But Shad Khan's got a lot of money. People do not realize how much a billion is. People don't realize how much a trillion is. Like people don't like, a trillion dollars is a lot of money. A lot of money. Um, ben Law says, bro, be careful when talking about my mayor. Ben Loss, I just went on a rant about how much I would love him here and how he's worth the money. I would never say anything bad. Unless you're talking about someone in the chat, which maybe you were. I get, I get confused sometimes, guys. You know, if you're talking to chat or talking to me. Ron Beedry says, Clayus is scheduled to return to Jacksonville after he's done his tour. Is that like a speaking it to existence type thing, Ron? Or is that, <laughs> is that fact? <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, so interesting to see. Uh, I know Calais is, you know, a big one there. But um, I honestly, Calais might be the last piece that's even an option to fall before the draft. I mean, the NFL draft is April 27th. Um, Band, uh, voluntary OTAs are May 22nd. So less than 30 days between the draft and volunteer OTAs. Now, does a free agent necessarily have to be at volunteer OTAs? No. I feel like this team feels like it's in a position where they can win the Super Bowl. And when that happens, you do get people to OTAs more. Um, so they might like to have, make that happen. But like moves for Lamar Jackson, there's no need to make moves like they're talking about the Colts trading their first round pick for Lamar Jackson or um, the Texans trading their first round pick for Lamar Jackson. Why not just draft who you want there and then trade for Lamar Jackson after the fact, then you're not giving up a top pick. In fact, if you get Lamar Jackson and a guy like Will Anderson, if you're the Texans, you probably will end up winning eight, nine, games next year um so you will be picking nowhere near four um so if i'm a gm i'm waiting until the draft to make a big trade like that with lamar jackson especially when he's making these ludicrous demands i mean we saw jim ursay owner of the colts say that uh he's he's worth the money but he's not worth the money guaranteed i think he wants 250 million guaranteed deshaun watson's at 220 million guaranteed yeah i mean the the browns definitely um hurt the they reset the quarterback market uh, Beedry says, no, it's true. I heard it somewhere yesterday. Oh, nice. Okay. JDW sports talk show says, what's up? Seems the Jags are clear favorites to win the South. Uh, yeah, they are three game, uh, three game favorites, which we talked about a little bit earlier is, is an outstanding, uh, am amount of games for Vegas to preseason, uh, sign. I mean, that, that's good. And the Jags are going to be in the thick of it next year. I mean, if they can stay healthy, they can keep their quarterback upright. Uh, if they can keep their receivers you know, and honestly, the key is Trevor Lawrence. You know, if there's injuries on, at the receiver position, defense, I think we could definitely weather that storm. It's just keeping Trevor upright. It's going to be the key. And that's why I've been just chirping and chirping about keeping Trevor upright. I mean, that's why I really think that who was it, Anton, uh, the, the kid from Oklahoma, um, Williams, Harrison, Anton Harrison, Anton Harrison. That's why I was big on Anton Harrison. Uh, being a guy the Jags look at because yeah I mean Walker Little he's he's okay, he's okay we think at at right tackle but if he's not or we have an injury 
then we need to have a viable swing tackle to put in there and protect Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence is the, is the future. He's the secret to success. C.J. Beathard is not coming in to this team with all the weapons that it has and, and making the Jags a contender. So keep Trevor upright. Um, Trevor is one of the most toughest players. Again, I, it sounds like I'm a homer at times, but legitimately he's a tough son of a gun, man. He took, he took hard hits in college on the national stage, the national championship game. Um, where it looked like he got concussed and then came back in the game. We've seen multiple times Trevor Lawrence have be tackled awkwardly or get hit to where we've seen those hits enough that it takes the average player out of the game. And Trevor always is resilient. Now, maybe it's his young bones and young joints. I mean, he still is a youngster. But tough, brave, courageous, not, not, enough, not enough good things to say about Trevor either. Uh, sports talk, JDW Sports Talk Show says, I think Ballard praising Lamar is a smokescreen for the Colts. I don't see the Colts doing it. I mean, I think when he said that he's not worth the guaranteed money, he pretty much said they weren't going to do it. Because Deshaun, I mean, uh, Lamar Jackson's not going to back off that that guaranteed money. Now, he may not get it from a, a, a suitor. He may end up going back to uh, Baltimore. To, I mean, there's rumors that Baltimore were offering him in the neighborhood of $200 million guaranteed, which is insane, insane amounts of money. Like, I'm all for players getting as much money as they can. I say this all the time. I defend the players every single time. Because NFL teams aren't looking out for you, so you got to look out for you, 100%. Um, but at what point, if if a team's at $220 million and it's $250 million, I mean, that's $30 million is a lot of money, but when we're talking about a quarter of a billion dollars, like... If you like Baltimore, go back to Baltimore. Don't go ruin your career at a trash team because you want to make $30 million more. You could make $30 million in incentives with a, with a good team. You could prolong your career in, a, in an offense that takes care of you and a team that takes care of you and sign a second contract for at least $30 million. Look, I In no way am I saying that he should... Take less money because, again, take as much money as you possibly can make. It's just weird. I can't even get into that headspace. I talk about it all the time. We can't get into the headspace of ShotCon. There's no way. We, we don't think the same way that he does. I, I'm admitting I don't think the same way Lamar Jackson does. So unless he just has some kind of beef with Baltimore or is not happy with their – I wouldn't be happy with their offensive scheme, just like power runs with Lamar all the time. No, thank you. I'll take Trevor's offense where I just drop back in the pocket and get rid of the ball as quickly as I can. That's the offense I would take. Um, I don't know. So we'll see what happens with Lamar. I, again, I just hope he doesn't go to AFC South team. Um, is there a chance that they, one of these AFC South teams implodes by trading the farm for, you know, is it, is it possible that the Colts mess up the quarterback decision yet again and they pick another wrong quarterback? Because if so, maybe it's worth it. Um, but I like Lamar, and I think that he can will his team to a few wins every year, and I would hate for one of those games that he willed his team to win. It, it would be against the Jags. I'd hate that. So not not hoping that happens. Uh, Volkfang says, the Deshaun contract seems too difficult to work around with all the size of guaranteed money. It's insane. Insane how much money he got. And honestly, it pales in comparison to some of these baseball contracts. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, Ron Beedry. That's why Trent Balky likes the big guys. More durable, play better in cold weather, play better in the second half of our games. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Lamar Jackson wants a fully guaranteed contract, and that is the stumbling ball. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Volk says, they should make as much money as they can, but the longevity you get from being a Hall of Famer, go to a team that gives you a chance to win those Super Bowl rings. Duval has seen that it's hard to get in without. True, as far as the uh, Hall of Famer, 100%. 100%. And it's just like, I'm with you there. And then I like think about $30 million, And like $30 million is so much money, that might be enough to... <laughs> I mean, we're, we're talking so much money right now. This isn't like these guys that are... You know, we're talking about Jamal Agnew. Think, put it, let me put it in perspective for you. We're talking about Jamal Agnew being too expensive at like $5 million, Or re-signing him at like a five, one year, five or $6 million. And Deshaun Watson's talking about getting $250 million guaranteed. 
think about that for a second. That is crazy. Five million <laughs> versus in Jamal Agnew versus two fifty from Lamar Jackson. That is crazy, man. I, that just blows my mind. JDW says, "No, I can't take screwing up quarterback again." I meant. Oh, are you a Colts fan? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot you're a Colts fan. Don't Listen, I hated, hated Peyton Manning when he was a player. I hated him. I grew up a Gator fan, so I, I hated him when he was at Tennessee. I uh, grew up a Jags fan. I hated him in, in, in Indy. I just hate the guy. Then he retired, and I like him. I've never seen someone do a full 180 flop. Um, Kobe Bryant did a, did a full 180 flop with a lot of people. Um, he was not liked by a lot of people when he was alive. Um, he did have that, um, I don't know if it was criminal or civil uh, assault charge, sexual assault charge. Um, that hurt his reputation too. But once he died, you know, people started talking about the good things and they kind of respected him after he was gone. I respect Kobe because, you know, he did a lot for women's sports and a lot of people don't take women's sports seriously, so I'm not going to talk about women's sports too much. I, I like all sports, um, and as a coach of youth sports, you know, I've seen some incredible women athletes. I don't know if you guys have seen that girl, Caitlin Clark, out of Iowa. That girl's a monster, absolute monster. Like, I have, like, we have group threads that I'm in. We talk about sports. One of them, like, a couple months ago, I was like, have y'all seen this Caitlin Clark girl? This girl's, like, kind of nasty. This girl, like, this girl has, like, best women's basketball player of all time written on her. She's a monster. So uh, I enjoy watching her play. Kobe Bryant did a lot for women's basketball. So uh, I was sad to see a pioneer champion of women's basketball um, be taken like that. But there was a big 180 on people perceived him. As an Orlando Magic fan, I did not like him because he beat us in the NBA Finals. Anyways, Volkfang says, man, the Pirates are the reason I can't pay attention to baseball. I think their player salary was a fourth or fifth of the Yankees. Okay, well, to be fair, Volkfang, I'm a Rays fan, a huge Rays fan, and we're right there with, with the Pirates. Our, our payroll is a fraction of what the Yankees have, but we have been competitive with the Yankees for the last 15 years because of our management and our farm system management um, and our GM being timely with contracts and trading players. So it can be done, but what the Rays have done is kind of an anomaly, and I really have seen nothing like it in sports ever. So I'm, I love that I get to drive down five hours south of where I live to go see a Rays game once a year. I go down to St. Pete. I love it a lot. I'm a homer for everything, not the Steelers, but the Pirates killed any enthusiasm for MLB, MLB baseball. Yeah, I know, I know some Pirates fans, and they share your sentiment. Yeah, and there's history there too. So that's what makes it probably even tougher for a team like the Pittsburgh Pirates, for sure. But... I don't know. Really interesting to see what will happen. Um, you know, we're, we're excited about what's going to go forward. I think we're all kind of waiting for the Clayus Campbell news to drop. That's kind of where we're at. Um, but essentially not much was done. We mentioned the two D linemen. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about, um, two potential free agents that the Jags – might look at getting and I'd love to get your thoughts on this guys is uh and if you're watching the show on VOD like feel free to make a comment in the comment section I recently found out that that helps your YouTube algorithm so maybe go back and leave a comment like hey Jason's awesome that would be great or something like hey Jason sucks and he talked about Caitlin Clark women's basketball for a long time I'll take any comment really you know bad press is any press is good press I don't know the saying two players that I kind of keep my eye on um, both former Colts, so maybe uh, JDW can give us a little insight here. Uh, Rocky Sin, corner. Now, I don't know like what's going to happen there. It might be one of these guys that comes in and, uh, and gets signed after the draft. But Rocky Sin, free agent corner, we might have some wiggle room in the, in the budget to bring him in. I think he would be, I don't, I don't know if he's a nickel or an outside corner, but um, I've seen his name float around. Uh, good corner. Wouldn't mind seeing him added to the team. Um, again, this would be if the Jags decided to go heavy on the trenches in the draft. Maybe they go tackle, edge, D-line, first three picks. And now they got to kind of move in free agency for some of these positions like corner, receiver, tight end, things like that. Um, you could see that there potentially. But Rockison, a name to look at, a name to think about. Um, decent, graded out decent on PFF last year. And um, I think might be able to, to help the team. Um, another name, former Colt, former Jaguar. Yannick Ngakwe is out there. 
Is he a guy you bring in to help out on the edge as a rotational piece? Um, you know, his, his glaring weakness of not being able to help too much on the run has, has improved, but now you're going to ask him to play every snap. you got some big guys out there like Trevon Walker um, and Josh Allen who can basically solidify the run defense. So do you bring a guy like Yannick Ngakwe in? You know, I saw an interesting stat since the, if you look at all the players that were drafted in 2016, all the players, uh, there's two players tied with 65 snacks snacks 65 sn uh, sacks <laughs> since 2016 chris jones and yannick ngakwe so two players that uh you know you know chris jones is good but ngakwe he gets after the quarterback and there's something to be said for players that get after the quarterback that's why i'm going to talk about will mcdonald the fourth a little bit on the next show uh nag gaming says coach trent uh, Volkfang says, dang, I'm going to have to go back and comment on every video. Thank you, Volkfang. Again, anything is fine. Now, Volkfang, listen, you support so much, man. I appreciate you just being here. Volkfang is one of my favorite people to talk to about the Jags, and I'm glad that he's here uh, every week. He, he, always has good, uh, he always has good research, for those of you who don't know Volkfang. He always has good research, or his, his points are well thought out, and he always makes me kind of like backtrack my thought a little bit and i always appreciate people like that you know why because we're critical thinkers around here we don't get locked into our little ideology box and if you disagree with us we get mad at you that's not what we do around here we're critical thinkers all right let me get off this train before it leads somewhere bad uh but thank you volkman jersey jaguar says who's your number one pick for the jags at 24 ha tough question the answer is depends i hate saying that but it depends on who's there if Everyone that is could potentially, if the if all the mock drafts are correct, let me put it this way: if all the mock drafts we're seeing are correct, which we know they won't be, but if all the mock drafts we're seeing are close to accurate, and you can get a guy like Michael or Brian Branch, the safety out of Alabama, he's more of a nickel corner, but he can play that safety role as well. Six foot one ninety, um, very smooth player. Like I love smooth defensive backs when they can flip their hips and and it's smooth that's what i look for don't think he'll be there um michael meyer tight end out of notre dame would be a game changer for our offense absolute game changer like i said earlier in the video you could play michael meyer lined up at the at the inline tight end spot and then line up evan ingram at the split out wide tight end spot and that's a completely viable lineup you could have those two guys and then you could have ridley and kirk on the field so that's a pretty solid uh, offensive crew out there. And um, I, Michael Meyer is just a monster. I mean, he can play, he can play that, that uh, red zone jump ball threat, which we desperately need. We've got Ridley now, but we need a tight end that can do that. I, and he can run block, too. Um, he, 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 you know who his comps are? His comps are Jason Witten. So I would love Dalton Kincaid. Um, if we're taking a kind of like a, you know, Deontay Banks, a lot of people are big on him. But again, I talked about him a little bit earlier. Will McDonald, the fourth, I know he's small. I know he's 6'4, 239. That 6'4 frame leads me to believe that he can put some weight on. He's also a redshirt senior. That makes him like two years older than guys like Anton Harrison, Nolan Smith, um, and Michael Meyer. But two years, you know, you're in the Big 12, edge rusher. You know, he led the he led college football in 2020 with 11 and a half sacks. Um, 2021, he had five forced fumbles, um, five sacks in 2022, but only played in 12 games. You know, he played in all 12 games, seven and a half tackles for loss, five sacks, four pass breakups. Um, terms that are used to explain him are like sack artist, explosive with long arms in creativity and getting off blocks. That's what you want in an edge rusher. You want someone that can get after the quarterback. You either get you, – you, I don't want to say this because you can develop a pass rushing skills, but it just kind of seems like lately that you either get sacks or you don't. Depending on where you line up, how big you are, what your technique is, you either get sacks or you don't. Like that's the bottom line. And so I know it's like the analytics people want to push back and say it's about pressures, not sacks. Okay, maybe. And I would listen to that argument. But – Bottom line is, dude gets sacks, and we need sacks. That's the bottom line. Let's not overcomplicate it. Let's not overcook the grits. We need sacks. He gets sacks. Um, Predator says, I would be really happy if we got Branch. Yeah, me too. 
Uh, JDW says Yannick was on and off last year. I don't like how he tends to give up mid run plays. Oh yes. You're spot on. We, that happened here in Jacksonville. Uh, then he goes on to say Meyer is perfect for the Jags. He can also block. I just don't think, I don't think he'll be there, man. I, th I think he'll get, I think he'll get wiped up before our 24th pick. Volkfink says my number one is Brian branch too. It gives the Jags day one starter potential at slot corner plus versatility to play at safety. Spot on. Uh, Moses says it's mayor. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I got to be corrected all the time. Thank you, Moses. Uh, Volkfang says Dewan Jones would be an interesting pick. Fairly athletic. 6'8", 374, could shed 20 pounds, maybe get slightly more athletic and still be the biggest guy out there. Okay. Maybe Dewan Jones is a guy that I, like Volkfang, you're making me think. All right, I'm going to add him. I'm going to add Dewan Jones to the list and we'll talk about him. Um, I, well, probably Friday, probably Friday. Maybe Thursday. Uh, you know Trent, I can't say bulky, uh, would go with Darnell Washington over any other tight ends. Uh, Trent Bulky is the type of guy that wants to go after like the injured players. So if he can get you injured at a discount, I feel like that's who he goes for. Um, Darnell Washington, yeah, I mean, I saw some people trying to compare him to Jelani Woods on Twitter. I don't think it's a fair comp. Um, Jelani Woods is a lot more raw and unrefined than Darnell Washington was. I mean, Jelani Woods was like a quarterback that like, turned into a tight end. Uh, Darnell Washington's like a monster tight end. So I do like the pick him. I do like him as a pick. Um, I just still think he's a little unrefined. Like he needs to go to a team that doesn't need a starter in the first round. I'm sorry. He needs to go to a team that doesn't need a starter this year in the first round. We need a starter this year in the first round. We're we have Super Bowl aspirations. So we need a plug and play guy. Josh L says this tight end class is really good, but I think we have we have to go defense in the first round. Saxonville, not Pressureville, says Chef Florida Boy. <laughs> but Chef Florida Boy comes in with the bomb from like the, the third row balcony. He comes in with drop from the top rope with an elbow. <laughs> Saxonville, not Pressureville. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Volk says everyone was freaking over uh, Kajan Kansi's combine, but um, Ada Bawar was even more freaky at the same size, but tested an edge instead of D-tackle. All right. Jersey Jaguar. Only thing the Jags could do at 24 that would upset me is offensive tackle. You have Walker and Robinson now. Go get the pass rush you need to win playoff games in the AFC. Like how confident are you though in Walker and Robinson, especially Walker at right tackle, and or, or how about either one of them staying healthy? Those were my concerns. Would be I think we're we're really thin at offensive line, um, especially with Tyler Shatley not back. I mean we're one deep all the way across the board, and that's assuming that Ben Barch is going to just step right into the role that he was at the beginning of last year after that long injury. I have concerns about the offensive line. I really do. And yeah, you do need an edge rusher, but you drafted an edge rusher number one overall last year. So you are expecting him to take that jump this year. I mean, he has to. He has to. You cannot. You almost can't. And I'm not I'm not putting any pressure on him. Like I just kind of watching his development and how he kind of got better toward the end of the season. I think he will take that next step this year. So I don't think they take an edge rusher, especially because an edge rusher in the first round becomes a, a rotational piece, right? I mean, an edge rusher, you're not going to start him over Josh Allen. You're not going to start him over Trevon Walker, and we'll bump him, bump Trevon Walker inside. Yeah, on some formations, you could definitely do that, but you did just sign Roy Robertson-Harris, who's who's the big end. So um, you got Devon Hamilton still. You got Fa, you got Fatu Kasi, who all, plays the other defensive tackle spot. So if we're talking about edge rusher or swing tackle, there's a chance that swing tackle could play more snaps than your rotational D end. If there's an injury or earlier in the year, I mean, we saw injuries this year on the offensive line. We saw a Ben Barch injury very early in the season. And we saw a Cam Robinson injury like three fourths of the way through the season. So you can count on an offensive lineman being injured at some point. So, but I, I get it. I get both sides and maybe it's, a, maybe it's somehow you would, that's why I think you got, I think that's why you address rotational edge in free agency. That's why I think Yannick Ngakwe, Jadavion Clowney, I think one of these guys is, is who we want to bring in. 
Kind of the same way we did with Arden Key. We did the same thing with Arden Key. We brought in a guy who was like trending up or you knew could get after the quarterback. So they went and got Arden Key. And he filled his role beautifully. How has Andre Sisco played for the Jags? First year, barely played Urban Meyer. His rookie year, for some reason, even though he, Urban Meyer drafted him, he wouldn't play Andre Sisco. Uh, went, became a full-time starter this year and was great. Great. Everyone's really excited about Andre Sisco. He, he, he's a young player and has a nose for the football. Uh, lays punishing hits on players. You may remember the hit that he had on Juju Smith-Schuster that knocked him out. Um, he also had one on, Ma- on Valdez Scantling, um, basically n- knocking them out of the game for a little bit. Um, but legally, they weren't illegal hits. So that was awesome to see. Volkfang, Zach Kuntz is the number one raw athletics score tied in from Math Bomb since 1987. All right, I got another guy here. I don't know anything about him. Zach Kuntz. Hopefully, you spelled his name right because I'm copying it straight from your comment. If Lucas Van Ness falls, he definitely is a bulky guy. All right. Uh, Gerald, I know I don't know Jersey. I wouldn't be upset with Torrance. Oh, you're saying you don't know if you agree with him. Okay. Um, Osiris Torrance, the lineman out of uh, Florida. Yeah. Reminds me reminds me of Cam Robinson a little bit. I mean, Cam, didn't Cam Robinson go in the second round, early in the second round? I could see that happening. The, Cam Robinson, Osiris Torrance, Jawan Taylor, they could all be the same type of player, to be honest. <laughs> They're really good. Uh, Mayer would also edge the tackles a bit, too. Yeah, but I hate depending on tight ends to do that because then you can't use them, you can't use them as, as a dual threat as, as much. I can almost guarantee they take right tackle and or guard before this draft is over. Yeah, I agree. It's just how early is the question. Like, they're going to take a tackle or a guard. They're going to take an offensive lineman because there's five of them. They're going to take a corner because there's three of them. They're going to take a D lineman because there's four of them. So, I mean, like, you know, you know they're going to take one. It's just, like, how early, how early. And that's, like, first three rounds, I guess, is where I'm kind of looking the most. Maybe four rounds. Ron Beedry says, I like Zach Kuntz. We can get him in the fourth round, and he looks like Trevor's big brother. Ooh. Fourth round guy. Okay. So, if he's not – I'm, I'm going to be talking about on Friday's show um, just, like, first round potential guys. Uh, just because there's so many – prospects to break down and i like to do justice with my breakdowns as far as like showing some film you know doing things like that that i can only fit a handful i'll probably only get to like three or four players i talk so much and i rant so much i'll probably go off on a life lesson at some point that i'll probably only get through three or four players in an hour show so uh that's okay i'll just have to put out more content which i'm going to do i hope Koontz is out of old dominion uh, Martaz Zaidi says Koontz tested well. I hope we can score him in a late round. Everyone's pumped on the Zach Koontz guy. Okay, I like it. Hey, listen, I'm gonna put him in bold on my notes here to make sure that I do not forget to look him up. Um, but yeah, hey, I'm super excited. Um, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about Jags free agency here. Uh, you know, there's not too too much um, to get to in in right now, but we are gonna be talking about potential Jags first round picks. So uh, be looking out. Um, Twitter and Instagram, I'll put it out, but it's probably either Thursday or Friday, depending on how my work schedule uh, works out. But um, you can put that out then. We're going to be talking about some players that I think the Jags might pick in the first round. Pros, cons, film, all that stuff. Um, I appreciate everyone being here, man. Thank you a lot. Thank you to all the people that re-upped as channel members. Uh, Philip Butcher, um, shout out to the channel members that were here. Volk Fang, um, UCF Jaguar, Predator. Um, looking through the list, we had... Um, we had... Washington State Jags fan. Um, if I missed you, I'm sorry, but uh, pre- C Breacher, appreciate everybody being here. Um, like the video, leave a comment, uh, tell a friend that's a Jags fan or a sports fan. We're going to be talking about a bunch of stuff, Jags. Um, appreciate you guys being here. I might jump on Twitch a little bit after this, so the Twitch description is below. Um, but until next time, as always.